Hey everyone, Rodev here, and today I'm going to be continuing the Obby series. So this is episode 2, and today we're going to be completing the checkpoint system. So let's get right into it. Real quick guys, the video is paused right now, but I just wanted to point out that I did not make the checkpoints visible in the video. So I have a screenshot up on screen, and basically the transparency property right there, you're just going to click on the 0, type in 1, and press enter. Basically that's just going to make all the checkpoints visible, so you just need to do that for each one, which is um, pretty easy. Other than that, you guys can go right back to the video. Peace. So one issue from last time is that the checkpoints are invisible, and I actually don't want to use these platforms. So what we're going to do is make the checkpoints visible, and uh, that's basically what we're going to do first. So actually, uh, I am going to add a new folder. So we're going to do a new folder, and we're going to call it checkpoints. And we're also going to do a little bit of rewriting in the main script. So uh, you just want to go ahead and grab all your checkpoints. One quick way is just finding them, clicking control, and then clicking on them. So holding control and clicking on them rather. And as you can see, I have all five of my checkpoints. And I'm going to drag them in. So uh, by no means do you have to use this whole model, but what you can do is uh, copy me by using this model. And uh, from there, you can just take all the scripts and all that into another game. And this will be dynamic. So basically what we're going to do is make it so that you can add as many checkpoints as you want and they will all work so there won't be any uh, need to change anything in any script so it's checkpoint number three this one is number four meaning this one is number five so now all our checkpoints are done we're going to be uh, continuing the script here so uh this is actually pretty complicated and i don't really want to do it so uh what i mean by that is i don't want to like repeti repetitively uh just do this so uh, go ahead and just copy this line because I don't want to type the whole thing I got the whole thing out again. So uh, once you have that line copied, you can delete that much. So uh, from here, what we're gonna do is make it so that it checks uh, the player's stage value and teleports them respectively. So uh, basically, we're just gonna teleport them to the checkpoint. So make sure uh, all of your checkpoints here they are all um, anchored true, can collide off, can touch needs to be on, so we can check when the player touches that checkpoint. So after that, you can go ahead and continue. So uh, right here, we need to teleport the player as soon as they join the game to their last stage. So for that, we're just going to find out what value they're on. So local value or uh, stage to TP, something like this. Stage to TP. Uh, I'm, I'm really indecisive. But stage TP equals uh, player colon wait for child. Uh, speech marks, rack, or, uh, bracket speech marks, leader stats, and in here you just want to do find first child named stage, and then you want to just do dot value, so we have a value. Actually, I'm not going to do dot, dot value because this causes issues sometimes, so I don't like uh, doing dot value here. So now what we're going to do is uh, teleport them to that respective stage. So uh, we just do. Well, repeat weight is already here, so we just do player dot character uh, colon find first child humanoid root part. Remember, it's uh, you need to type it exactly like this, or else it will not work. Uh, remember, it's not going to show up as anything else when the player lives in the game, so it needs to be exactly like this, or it will not work uh, because we're changing the position of the humanoid root part, which teleports the whole player. So we're changing the position of the humanoid root part, it's not going to work. So from here what we do is dot C frame equals, and here's the, uh, not really tricky, but uh, now what we're going to do, is, here's the dynamic part. So now what we're going to do is workspace dot checkpoint, and then now what we do is a dot stage, uh, TP or find first child actually, uh, just so it's uh, easier, or it doesn't throw any errors in the future. So Find first child, and right here we need to do stage TP. So make sure these are all named one. Make sure there's like no spaces or anything, and uh, they should all just be named the number. So uh, we're just gonna find the stage TP and teleport them. So this will teleport them to whatever their stage value is, and uh, like the part. So we just add dot C frame, and then we just need to teleport them up in the air, or else, or else uh, they will be stuck in the ground. So vector three dot me. And then in brackets, 0, 5, 0. And once you've done that, we can go ahead and make a new line inside the bracket. There we go. Now, the next thing we're doing is uh, letting these parts, uh, or waiting for the player to touch any of these parts since we're in a uh, new thread. 
uh, waiting for the player to touch any of these parts and then changing their stage value based on that. So we're not going to let the players go backwards in stages. For that we're going to be using the arrows at the top. And the arrows at the top, they are not going to uh, change the player's stage value. They're only going to change uh, what stage they're on. So it might sound a bit complicated, but the thing is we need the player to be able to go forward afterwards. So uh, we do need to do actually a new value just so we know uh, where the player is in the game. So right here, I'm actually going to do stat 2 instead. Stat 2. It can be called anything really, like I could call it uh, this. I'm actually going to call it this just uh, to show you guys. Equals instance dot new int value. And right here you're just going to put it inside the player, not the stats because we don't want it showing up uh, on the leader sets. We just want to know where the player is. And make sure you type local because we're making a new uh, variable. Now you can just type it without local. Make sure you type it without local. Uh, and we just need to set the name. So this actual name in the explorer. And a uh, current stage, I'm going to call it. This will tell us where the player is at all times because when the player touches a new checkpoint, the current stage value will change. So uh, after we do that, we're going to go ahead and uh, do dot value equals one. Because when the player first ever joins the game, it's going to be one. And then after that, uh, the save data script will change it. So uh, don't bother to pause the video or anything for that save data script. It is in the description. Just go ahead and copy paste it. Uh, other than that, let's get uh, right back to it. So now what we're doing is creating a for loop. So for i comma v in pairs. I'm going a bit fast. You can always pause it. And right here we're saying do workspace dot checkpoints colon get children. This is where you need. Uh, this is where the can touch property is important. This is where you need to make sure this is enabled for all five of these parts. So uh, real quick, if it if the can touch thing is showing up like this, like a little checkered box, just click it, it'll go off. Click it, it'll go on for all of them. And how did I select them all? I clicked the first one, I held shift, I clicked the last one, and I selected them all in between. So from there, now we have every single part. Uh, this returns a little uh, table or a list of all of these parts. And if we hit enter, we'll get a do and an end. So now we need to do. Uh, now what we need to do is v. I'm just gonna zoom in a bit for you guys. V dot touched. Colon connect function. Just like this. And we actually do need the hit. Just so we can check if it's the uh, player. So if hit dot parent. I'm actually gonna use dot name here. So if hit dot parent dot name equals 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 rather player dot name because uh, we're inside our own thread for this player right here uh, so if it equals the player's name then what we're going to do is actually real quick I'm just gonna call this uh, new PLR so it changes to new PLR uh, it could be like this if you like I'm just gonna call it new PLR and then in here just go down a few lines and, to, and then type local player equals new PLR this is just in case of an unexpected error, just type new PLR here and then create player and uh, make it the new PLR. Just so we can save the player that we're working on right now. So uh, now that we have this done, uh, we just check if it's the player's name. And from here we can proceed. So now what we need to do is uh, find out what they uh, touched. So uh, that's basically just going to be the V because that'll be the checkpoint. So now uh, what we do is we go ahead and change the player's current stage value. So we do player dot leader stats because at this point we do know that they have leader stats uh, as we did over here using wait for child. So player dot leader stats or not leader stats. I'm sorry. Uh, we just do player dot and I'm actually just going to do wait for child because we're not doing leader stats anymore. We're going to have to use wait for child. So player colon wait for child current stage just like this. And what this allows us to do is change the player's current stage by finding it inside the player. And once we do have it, I'm actually going to call this local current stage equals player wait for child current stage. And now what you can do is change the value. So current stage, I'm actually, actually put two U's here. Get rid of one. Current stage dot value equals, and remember it's an int value, so we're just going to set it to a V dot name. Make sure all these parts are only numbers uh, with their names. So now we have the uh, player's current stage, and now what we do is if current stage dot value, 
And now we need to do is make sure the, uh, the stage value cannot go down. So if the current stage value is greater than the player's current stage, then we can change the player's current stage. So if the current stage value is greater than uh, player.leaderstats.stage.value, then we can go down here and we can change the stage dot value. So player dot stage dot value equals current stage dot value. So there we go. Now, if uh, the new uh, checkpoint that they've hit is greater uh, than the stage that they're on or the stage that they had in their leader shots, then we'll update their leader shots and the leader shots will save, uh, not automatically, but they will save upon when the player leaves the game. So from here, I think that's pretty much it uh, for all we have in this video. We can go test it out and uh, start fixing errors because I always have errors. So let's check it out. Looks like I didn't make them visible. And we do have our first error. <laughs> let's get right into fixing this. So attempt to next that with C frame. So humanoid root part dot C frame. Find first child stage TP dot uh, C frame. Uh, I found the issue. So what we need to do right here, stage TP dot value. The, so instead of looking for uh, uh, the int value, it's going to look for the int values value, if that makes sense. So instead of looking for number, it's going to look for the actual number. And as you can see, I've teleported properly. So now we can go ahead and go to the next stage and it should update. But when I go back to the stage, it should not update. <laughs> Looks like we have errors. Uh, stage is not a uh, property or a uh, child of me. So I player dot leader stats, my bad. So player dot leader stats uh, dot stage dot value. Because we're changing the leader stats value now. Okay, guys, I finally loaded in. I don't know why it's taking a while. I think one of my plugins is broken. So anyways, once I go here, it should change to 2. And if I go back, it should not change to 1. There we go. It didn't change to 1, which is great. Now I'm just going to go to 3 and make sure it doesn't change back to 2. So we haven't scripted the kill bricks yet. But there we go. It changes to 3. And we can go to 2. It does not change back. So another thing we do need to do is make the arrows at the top. That will be in a future part as well. But I think that's uh, all we're going to do in this part. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope part 2 went well for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I check comments very regularly. Uh, probably about every hour or so. So if you do have any comments, make sure... Questions, rather. <laughs> uh, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. I will respond to you. Other than that, it's Rodev. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I can see you want to vibe with me. Just say you want to vibe with me. Feeling like I want a lottery. You getting a lottery.